it's that time again to start thinking about what species you want to fish for this weekend. The water temperatures are cooling down, and that means the mackerel are ready to bite. This is the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, powered by Harbor Trucks and presented by Yamaha. Welcome back to the Florida Insider Fishing Report. We are excited in a bittersweet kind of way to get our season finale show underway with our live studio audience, which includes the FGCU fishing team and a few special guests, because today we are talking all kinds of mackerel, right, Rick? Absolutely, Bree, and as you know, the fall months are when the Spanish mackerels push into the Gulf and it's on fire right now. It is on fire. And as always, we have our CCA workbench master over there, Dave Farrell. How Dave, you doing? What are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about all four species of mackerel. Yes. Four. 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 What? Well, yeah, there are. You'll all find right. out. We'll this. find You'll out. Find I didn't know out. this. Later. I didn't know this. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Don't, don't I lie. Hope so. All right, the Star Trek Central West region is first on deck, and Captain Jeff Page is ready to get this party started. So, Page, what do you got to say about them next? Well, let's get this thing started. You know what? In the Startron Central West region, we have a year-round Spanish mackerel bite, and probably 75% of it is near shore or actually in our bays and estuaries. Probably the best way to locate the mackerels, and you're going to hear this throughout the night, is to find the bait schools, find the birds, and you're going to find the mackerel action. They like good, clean, moving water, and some of the best Spanish mackerel fishing occurs during the fall and spring months right along our beaches. Sometimes you can catch them from the beach and most definitely off of piers and jetties that stick out into the Gulf. Um, as far as our inside our bays, this time of year is probably some of the best mackerel action and you're gonna find them in the middle of the bays, like from the Skyway South or North and then down in the middle of Charlotte Harbor where that current flows towards the Peace of Mayaka River. Find the big schools of hatch bait, small thread fin, small pilchards, and you're going to find these mackerel. A lot of the good lures to use are, are just your standard spoons, lipped plugs, or you can even throw surface plugs around the action and they're going to come up crashing. Um, I suggest using a small piece of wire with your lures because they will cut you off. As far as live bait, it's tough to not have a live well full of pilchards throw a few batfuls of chummies out, get them popping, and then take a free line pilchard. And a little trick I do, Rick, I use a long shank 2-0 hook, and it eliminates having to use a piece of wire. And you can use it tied right to your mono, and that long shank on the hook serves as a piece of wire, and it's going to avoid a lot of cutoffs. In the wintertime, it's a little spotty, but we still find lots of smaller fish out in the Gulf. I've got a mackerel photo tonight of young Dylan... Dylan Miller of Tampa with a nice Spanish Mac that she caught with her dad, Captain Billy Miller. All right, Paige, what Next. else you got in shore? I got tarpon, late summer, early fall tarpon bite, just like down there where you live. Uh, it remains strong. There's lots of fish down in Charlotte Harbor, in the middle of the harbor. Again, where all that bait is that the mackerels are eating, the tarpons are there too, towards the mouth and the Peace and the Mayaka River. Live ladyfish, cork pinfish, DOA bait busters are getting the job done. And then up to the north at the mouth of the Manatee River along the shoreline from Emerson Point north to Port Manatee. Look for the fish rolling on the calm mornings in and amongst the small hatch bait schools. And then again, you can cast a cork pinfish for best, best results. Got a photo tonight of longtime friend Timmy Burquest with a nice tarpon he caught with Captain Bobby Mitchell. Uh, moving offshore, first species, red grouper. Red grouper bite has probably been really consistent all summer long. Throughout the summer months, moving into the fall looks no different. Quality fish holding on hard bottom areas and Swiss cheese bottom areas anywhere from 90 to 150 feet. Good idea to bring a couple boxes of frozen sardines. Also stop in Sabiki up some pinfish. Uh, Captain Eric White suggest moving around not fishing one area too much for your better red groupers i've got a photo tonight of brett with a nice red grouper he got with captain josh pruner of ripping lips charter and my last species my last species tonight amber jack 
Amberjack bite remains consistent with lots of medium to large AJs holding on ledges as well as wrecks and reefs. In as close as 70 feet out to 110 off of Venice north to Anna Maria. And I've got a photo tonight of Brian with a nice Amberjack he caught with Captain Josh Pruner of Rip and Lip Charters out of Braden and Beach. And I just want to thank all the crew at RM Media and all the sponsors of the show, especially StarTron that sponsors the StarTron Central West region. And thanks again, Rick, for all you do for us. All right, bud. We'll see you in a few days. We're going to go take a look at the Daiquiri Deck Central West hotspots. Inshore Spanish mackerel crashing bait schools all over the South Tampa Bay from the Skyway Bridge north to Port Manatee. And then offshore gag groupers. Nice gags are holding on the ledges of Cortez south to Venice and 140 feet of water, Bree. All right, Rick. Well, since we're in Daiquiri Deck territory, this is a good time to tell everyone about your meet and greet. Join Captain Rick, Jeff Hageman and Jeff Page at Daiquiri Deck in Siesta Key, October 4th from 6 to 8 p.m. for some photos, giveaways, fish stories, and of course, some daiquiris. daiquiris. That's going to be a fun time. Uh -huh. And October 3rd, I will be joining Rick, Jeff Page, and Jeff Hageman for the Harbor Chuck Seminar in Port Charlotte from 4.30 to 8 p.m. So come on over, get to know us, ask some questions, and check out some Harbor Chuck's vehicles. And I think we're going to get to go on the... Yeah, man. Driving course, right? Test drive. Look at you, you a diamond in the rough with all those guys in that poster. I know, it's okay. <laughs> Poor thing. I, love, I love my guys in the poster. All right, Captain Jimbo Thomas in the Casa Vieja Southeast region is now on the line, and it's just about that time of year where we can say hola to some Spanish Max. Tell us, Jimbo. That's right. Well, you know, here in the Southeast region, we start to see Spanish mackerel around the, in, the middle to the end of October, so that's coming up pretty soon. And the best mackerel fishing is usually out in front of any of the inlets of the region. And occasionally those, they, those mackerel will venture into Biscayne Bay, basically following the bait. Now, best baits are small live pilchards or sardines. Live shrimp work really good. Or you might want to tip a jig with a piece of shrimp, and then small spoons really work well as well. Light spin or casting tackle is perfect for these mackerel. And they're using the one to five pound range. We're talking about Spanish mackerel. And I like to use a short piece of number three wire leader to prevent any cutoffs because they do have some sharp teeth. And then we also have zero mackerel. They're also very common down here in the Southeast region. And they're usually found on the reef and especially in areas that are holding schools of ballyhoo. And that's the key to Spanish and zeros. They're following the bait. And the way to tell the difference between a Spanish mackerel, they have yellow dots and the zeros have yellow dashes. And those zeros, they're generally a little bit larger than the Spanish. They average in the three to 10 pound range. Now I got a photo here. And this is a big cereal mackerel caught by Zach Salyers with his dad, Captain Scott Salyers. That's a nice one there. Now, staying offshore, we're still finding dolphin offshore, but with the full moon that we had earlier in this week, it's been a little tough the last couple of days. But as we get away from this moon, I suspect the bite should pick up again. I sure hope so. And on top of that, the average size has gotten a lot better. We're still finding some schools of small fish, but the bulk of these fish have been in the five to 10 pound range with some larger ones mixed in. And just like in the past month, the fish have been offshore anywhere from eight to 15 miles. You look for them around sargassum weed, floating debris, and occasionally under birds, mostly on the floaters. And the larger fish have been traveling to the south at a pretty good pace. So it's made it really hard to stay in front of them at times. So if they are moving, keep the boat going south. Now, a few of the fish, they're being caught on the troll with rig baits and small lures. And once you locate that school, you can cast live pilchards, small blue runners, and also cut bait like cut bonita or cut ballyhoo. And there's also been plenty of bait under any of those weed patches and that floating debris. So you want to keep your sabiki rod ready to restock that bait well, mostly with small blue runners. That's what they're eating the best, and that's what's been hanging underneath that debris. Now, moving inshore, snook fishing remains good in the inlets and also in the surf off of the beaches. In the inlets, you want to fish with live herrings, pilchards, pinfish, or croakers, or you can bounce jigs or soft plastics along the bottom, and you want to fish in the evening. And the fish have been biting on both tides, but the outgoing uh, tide seems to be a little better since the water's not as clear. Then the fish, the snook has all, also moved off the beaches where they're being caught from both the shore and by boat. And if you're shorebound, try walking the beach in the early morning or in the late afternoon and cast green and white DOA or Bass Assassin 4-inch jerkbait into that trough just off the beach. 
And if the seas are calm and the water's clear, you might be able to sight fish those snook cruising in the surf. Now, it seems like the smaller fish are roaming in schools and the larger fish have been singles or pairs. And then staying inshore, coming off that full moon that we had earlier this week, the permit fishing has been really good in Biscayne Bay. And those permit, they prefer really good weather, just like us fishermen. So on the good days with good visibility and good weather, meaning not lots of storm and winds throughout the day, those per- permit have been biting the best. Now, the permit fishing has been good around the Ragged Keys. Those fish have been in the 7 to 10-pound range. And then a little further south to Caesars Creek and Angelfish Creek, the fish have been a little bigger in the 15 to 20-pound range. And you want to look for a hard bottom that has, like, a lot of coral, uh, crabs, a lot of life on it, and good tide flow. And you want to fish with silver dollar-sized crabs or crab pattern flies. All right, thank you so much, Jimbo. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the southeast hotspots. Jimbo says, inshore, look for the snook in all the inlets and off of the beaches in the evenings and the early mornings where they're eating live and artificial baits. And then offshore, cast live and cut baits to dolphin offshore around any floating debris. Ha <laughs> ha, debris. Oh, good one. Wow. Coming up on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, we're headed down to the Keys. But first, we're headed over to the CCA Workbench for rigs and techniques with Dave. Yep, Dave. Big mackerel or little mackerel? Big or little. Big I see little. a lot of wire over here. Yes, it is. Oh, very wiry. We'll be right back. <laughs> Lots of wire. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Harbor Trucks. Visit harbortrucks.com. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Contender Boats, always in the game. Sirius XM Marine, weather, fishing info, and channel surfing. Daiquiri Deck, Sarasota's favorite place to meet. And Sea Sucker, get pumped. Introducing the 2018 Nissan Titan Half Ton. The Titan you've known and loved since 2004 has been redesigned. Titan comes with a 5.6 liter gas V8 engine putting out 390 horsepower. Or opt for the Cummings Turbo Diesel with a 5 year 100,000 mile warranty and up to $9,600 in total savings. The Titan has never been so affordable. So for special hassle free Florida Insider Fishing Report pricing, call one of our truck specialists now at 833 Got Trucks or visit harbortrucks.com forward slash Rick. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all-new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. If you want to set your fishing on fire, check out the new Ricky Red Rods by Akuma. I've personally designed these rods to make you a better fisherman. This graphite rod is light, strong, and very well balanced, and it will feel great in your hand. And the Fuji Reel seats and guides will accommodate your favorite size reel. I love them so much that I even put my name on it. Ricky Red Rods by Akuma. Here's a look at the FWC news and notes. October 2nd, there's a Sarasota PS boating course, and October 4th, there's the Volunteer Oyster Reef Restoration in Panama City. For more information, visit myfwc.com. But now, let's head to the CCA workbench for some rigs and techniques. Well, we're here at the Academy Sports yes, sir. And Outdoors CCA Workbench, Dave, and as you can tell, Academy sells a lot of cool stuff. Oh, I got a lot of stuff up here because <laughs> I'm trying to cover all the mackerels. Now, like I said before, we've got four mackerels here. Four. And, yeah, four of them. We've got the Spanish mackerel, the king mackerel, the Ciro mackerel, and the Wahoo 
The wahoo is a mackerel oh, fish. Most geez. people, most I, people why, don't even know I, that. That's why I pay you the big bucks. Yeah, exactly. Keep me straight. Said <laughs> I knew that a wahoo is a mackerel. <clears throat> <sighs> that's a good one. Anyway, we're no raise them. We <laughs> well, and because <laughs> you know all these mackerels, they feed the same way pretty much. They they have razor sharp teeth. They're very fast. They're all shaped like a torpedo, and they come in and they take the tail off a of bait. They, that's what they do. They come in with those mouth open and whoop, and usually they cut the thing right in half and take the tail and then they come back and eat the head. And so what we have to do is we got to figure out a way to get a hook in them and keep them on. Right. So usually we have to use, if we're catching the little Spanish mackerels, we use a lot of this stuff over here uh, and some wire leader always or a heavy 50 pound monofilament. Most Spanish can't bite through 50. Uh, if you get a great big one, you might, if he gets it right in his mouth. Right. But what we try to do is we'll try to use a circle hook if we're using a live bait right. and the 50 pound leader, that'll usually wind up putting that hook in the corner where he can't get his teeth onto the leader, which right. is always a great thing. And, and we'll use a, a live pilcher or a, a mullet, uh, especially one of those little tiny mullets that are running right now. Right. You, you can also catch a lot of Spanish on trolled plugs. Uh, our buddy Kwanzaa trolls this uh, Rapala plug out there in his kayak, and he catches a lot of uh, kingfish and Spanish mackerel on that little plug right there. And you know. Now let me ask you something: Is he sure. paddling fast? Yes. Well, as fast as he can paddle. <laughs> well, he's got the you know he's got one of those drives in there. You can. Oh, he's kicking. Yeah, you can move really good with those things. Now for Spanish mackerel, uh, this little sucker right here is probably one of the best lures you can use, and it's a gotcha. And it comes in all different shapes and sizes. And here's one with some wire on it. You know, I always put some you know use, use these with some wire. Uh, because they get bit a lot. And, but again, the, you know, the long body of these things usually keeps their teeth off your leader. You can't get away with some mono, but just be prepared to lose some because uh, they, they get eaten a lot. Those spoons over there are really good too as well to troll. Uh, Clark spoon, any kind of little spoon like that. Uh, if there's Spanish mackerel around, they're gonna eat that. So Dave, some of the old school ways, you know, because they mm -hmm. see the wire when the water's clear, mm -hmm. what do you think about using mono, like 60, 50 you can. and you 60, can. even 80? 50 and 60 pound mono, you know, if they're in there eating really good, they, they don't care. Yeah. And especially if you're using a live bait, right. they're gonna eat it. I, although I tell you, with the Miradine, uh, little Miradines, the, I've, I've actually outfished guys using live pilchards right next to me. Right. Those, those Miradines really, the Spanish mackerel really love those things. You know why so that a lot, is? a lot of everything eats those things. Artificial plug can't play possum. Yeah, exactly. But the art of, the live bait, he can play possum. He can sometime. go down and get in the... the yep. And if you ain't moving, the mackerel's not going to eat you. <laughs> That's correct. You know? That's correct. So. Now, we've also got some kingfish stuff here. You know, kingfish, uh, we're going to probably be trolling four to six knots. We troll ballyhoos with a single a long shank, single hook in them. Uh, I, they make a special extra long shank, seven or eight aught, that gets way back there in the ballyhoo. And if I'm getting a lot of tail bites, you use a stinger rig, which is a you know piece of eight aught or I mean a eight wire, number eight wire, even down to number four if you're not catching great big ones, and a big triple aught uh, circle hook. I mean a treble hook on there, triple strength, and you can you'd be surprised how many big fifty plus pound wahoos I've caught and that little tri that little treble hook's the only thing that's keeping so me So I on. have a question for you. We're gonna make mm -hmm. believe this is our ballyhoo. Correct. When we go to put the stinger rig in, do mm -hmm. you put one in the top like this or do you try to hook it in the side? Where do you I put it? I always put it in the side just because I don't, because I figure. Underneath? I, no, on the side side. Just on because side. it's, yeah, just because it's. Well, what's wrong with this side? Nothing. Because it depends on where the wire is from where you got your hook. Now, you don't want to come over the top of the bait. It's going to be on the same side that you have the wire tied to the main hook. Okay. So you're not going to come over the top. I, I just. It'll I, be down the side. And I, and I usually do it that way because if you put something on the top or on the bottom, sometimes it'll act like a keel. And if it's not straight, it'll make your bait do weird stuff. Yeah, and that's why I like to be on top mat. Yeah, well, you know, you but right here. I, I like to okay. put it on the side. All right, man. Yeah. What else? Uh, well, we got you know a bunch of wahoo stuff. If you're gonna, you know, wahoo like a, a is one of those. <clears throat> he likes to hit stuff going a little faster, so you can go 12, 14 miles an hour or knots and try to try to get a bite out of them that way. They like shiny stuff. All right. Re, I like shiny stuff too, so where are we going next? I like shiny stuff too, Rick. All right, you guys didn't mention your Ricky Red Rods, but just a reminder, if you want to set your fishing on fire, the Ricky Red Rods are available by Okuma, and you can simply go to rickyredrods.com to order and check out our cool video. Well, if you're fishing in the Keys this weekend, our captain, Randy Tao, is about to school us on the mackerel fishing. So, Randy, go ahead. We're listening. Hey, good evening, fish fans. 
You know, when we talk about mackerel, we have uh, three different types. We've got kingfish, king mackerel, zero mackerel, and Spanish mackerel. And believe it or not, there are fishing guides down here that will target each and every one of these. And some of the ones in particular, like a, a kingfish, you're going to find on the Atlantic side, you're going to find in the Gulf, and usually they're going to be the bigger of the species. And live bait is really the way to go on the on the king mackerel, especially around the reefs and around areas that are going to hold bait, yellowtails especially. Right now, this time of year, coming up, we got the fall coming, the big kingfish show up on the edge of the reef eating the yellowtail. So many times when you're yellowtailing, you get bit off, you think it's a shark. Well, it's really a big kingfish. Now, if you go in the backcountry, it's also a good time of year because the fall brings in the Spanish mackerel out of the Gulf of Mexico and into Florida Bay, and a lot of guys really take advantage of that, and it's a lot of fun because you can catch them on light tackle. They're going to average two to maybe eight or nine pounds for big ones, and they're a lot of fun. And you're going to anchor up outside the Springer Bank area, Pontoon Bank, Oxfoot. Those areas are known, and they're a really good area to fish. You might find this set of birds and a big flock of birds is going to indicate bait and these mackerel and you can anchor down once you've figured out a few spots save them in your gps you can go back to them for the next few months and you'll probably continue catching them you just want to anchor down put a block of chum in throw out a, a piece of shrimp on a lead head or live bait if you got it filtered are always great and you're going to get these spanish mackerels and cereal mackerel going um, captain rick kilgore he's a local here in isla Mirada. He loves catching mackerel and ceros, especially. His wife loves to eat them. And I have a photo of Elena with a nice big ciro mackerel. That's great, Randy. All right, what else you got for us, bud, this week? You, you know, the red fishing has gotten pretty good the last week or so. We've had some good tides. We've had some good conditions. And guys are finding them on the flats, uh, actually closer to Isla Mirada on the bay side and also around Flamingo. But the shallow water fishing, the water's gotten really pretty about halfway back to Flamingo, and guys are finding plenty of redfish up on top of the flats. Now, it's sight fishing, so that means once your guide lines you up with that fish, it's all up to you to make a good cast, and hopefully you got a Ricky Red Rod to make it work. And if you're fishing the shorelines with live bait, live pinfish, live pilchards along the shorelines on the incoming tide has been working very good as well. And a lot of these redfish right now will also be mixed in with the snook on the shoreline. So you might catch a little of each, you never know. But Captain Brian Williams, I've got a photo of him with Serenity Charters. He fishes out of Angler's House Marina in Isla Mirada. And his angler, Mitch, got the ear, caught this nice redfish, and guess what he was using? What? Ricky Red Rod. It's a Ricky Red, right? Of there. course it was, Dad Gummit. I just wanted to hear you say it. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's so happy. <laughs> what else you got for me, Papa? Mutton snappers. You know, I love bottom fishing. I love drifting for mutton snappers just because, you know, it's action, it's fun. Sometimes you'll catch a grouper or something else, but consistently with a long leader and live bait, anywhere's in 150 to 200 feet of water especially on some live bottom now drifting over you know just plain sand you may not get a bite but if you've got some broken up sea fans and a few rocks here and there chances are muttons live there and uh, live bait is is important i love ballyhoos this time of year the ballyhoos are easy to catch on the edge of the reef and uh, you want to fish about a 30 foot leader and you want to get your bait away from the lead that's the whole idea and if you've got an east wind, you're going to start deeper. The wind's going to blow you in. Sometimes you have a good current and you drift up the road paralleling the edge of the reef, which keeps you in a good depth of water. And uh, I've got a photo from uh, Captain Victor Francini. He is a bottom fishing guru out of Key Largo. And his angler, Annie Oakley, caught this nice mutton snapper with him doing just that. What else you got for me, Randy? Blackfin tuna. You know, this time of year, guys are still finding a few dolphin offshore. And once you're out there, you may as well go by the hump and catch a few tunas for dinner. Now, a lot of guys catch them in, in a bunch of different ways. You can troll for them with the little eels or the dark feathers, or you can live bait them. It's a lot of work to bring that live bait out there. And a lot of times you can be handicapped by putting the bait in the water and the sharks show up and you don't catch anything. So. Sometimes the trolling works very well, and also the deep jigging with the butterfly jigs, 
they work very well uh, a lot of times catching bigger fish because you're not chumming. You're not, you're not turning those sharks on to the live bait being in the water. I've got a photo from Captain Chris Trossett who does it the absolute best with real fly charters in Key West. He's got this picture of his angler, Mike Roy, with a nice tuna they caught on a top water plug down in Key West. Thank you so much, Randy. And just for the record, guys, he's the best rod designer there is. He's the one who helped me design the Ricky Red Rods, Bree. Yes, but we got to look at the hot spots from the Florida Keys. Captain Randy says, inshore, snook, fish along the coastlines on the incoming tide or around Flamingo area on, on the low rising tide. And then offshore, mutton snappers. Start drifting in 200 feet of water and let the wind and the current push you in. A long, long leader and live baits is going to do the trick. When I say long leader, 50 feet. 50 feet, really? 50 feet. All right. Nothing less. You heard it. All right, let's check out some tournaments going on in the Florida Keys, shall we? We shall. We shall. The Fall Backcountry Fly Championship is set for October 26th and 27th and focuses on two days of fly fishing for redfish and snook in Isla Mirada. The Costa Sugarloaf Showdown is scheduled for November 1st through the 3rd and concentrates on catch and release of bonefish, permit, and barracuda in the Lower Keys. The Robert James Redbone Celebrity Tournament is scheduled for November 2nd to the 4th in Isla Mirada. It's the final of a trio of legendary Keys tournaments that raise money for cystic fibrosis treatment and research. And now let's check in with Andy Newman to see what tournament he has. What do you got, Andy? Well, hi guys. The Chica Lodge All-American Backcountry Fishing Tournament is set for November 8th to the 10th in the Florida Keys. In honor of Veterans Day, the Isla Mirada-based event is to invite two war heroes to join the competition. The tournament focuses on catch and release of five species, including snook, redfish, bonefish, tarpon, and permit. More details at chica.com. And for more information on other tournaments in the Florida Keys, always go to flakeys.com. All right, thanks, Andy. The Northeast and Panhandle regions are coming your way, along with our friends from Maverick, right here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by PowerPole, Swift, Silent, Secure, Bass Assassin, and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventures. The American Fishing Tackle Company, any fish, any water, since 1958. Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. And Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joincacaflorida.com right now. As close as you're going to get to a sure thing for catching billfish is Guatemala. They're here, man. This has been a 20 year run, buddy. These things haven't left, there's no cycle. When it comes to sail fishing, this is the real deal. The amount of sailfish here is ridiculous. Introducing the 2018 Nissan Titan Half Ton. The Titan you've known and loved since 2004 has been redesigned. Titan comes with a 5.6 liter gas V8 engine putting out 390 horsepower. Or opt for the Cummings Turbo Diesel with a 5 year 100,000 mile warranty and up to $9,600 in total savings. The Titan has never been so affordable. So for special hassle free Florida Insider Fishing Report pricing, call one of our truck specialists now at 833 Got Trucks or visit harbortrucks.com forward slash Rick. So here with me is Charlie Johnson and Skip LaShawn from Maverick Boat Group. And you know, Skip, 
you guys have been involved in the fishing report for a long time. We have. We've been here since the, the onset. I think 2004. 2004. When, when was up in Orlando. Yeah, we've been here, and it's been a, a great run. And on behalf of everyone from Maverick Boat Company, thanks for what you do. No, and we appreciate absolutely. you being here. Yeah. Hey, listen, it's an honor to represent your products. You guys, unfortunately, inherited me from Bob Hughes. <laughs> yes, we did. When Scott yes, we bought did. Hughes boats, but I've been fortunate to run Hughes, Pathfinder, and Maverick. And Charlie, we've got some new news, so why don't we talk a little bit about the existing um, f facility, the manufacturing facility? Yeah, so the reason you bring up the existing facility is because we have a new facility as well. And so the new facility is about twice the size of the existing facility, but the existing facility is going to keep on in operation, and we're going to keep on building the, the Maverick HPX is there, the smaller Pathfinders, and the Kobe is from the 261 and down. And the Hughes's as well, right? Hughes's as well. So, Skip, let's talk a little bit about the new facility. We've just got this state-of-the-art facility. It's very unique. Yes, so, it what makes it so unique? Well, we just we've been open a couple months now. We built our first boat in Ju we built our first boat there in July, and it's a it's it's a state-of-the-art facility. It really is. It's 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 made for boat manufacturing. It's a long, 850 feet long building. Um, boat comes in one end as resin. It makes a straight shot all the way to the other end, 850 feet. It goes out as a boat. The first turn that boat makes is when it gets on a truck and gets out of the, out of the facility. So, go ahead. Uh, just, and, and again, we have, we have a lot of great systems in the facility, um, a, a dedicated spray booth, a dedicated cut area. It's all climate controlled. We have climate controlled resin tanks. It's just, it, it's the way a boat building company should, should build boats. I mean, it's a state of the art facility, it really is. You know, the one thing I noticed when I was there visiting the facility is it was dust free. How do we do that? It is dust free. We have a designated cut area. We control the air. It's all brought out through uh, air handling systems. It's all filtered before it goes out of the building. Same thing with the gel booth. The gel booth is completely enclosed. The, 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 the gel coaters standing there spraying. There's no fumes. It's just, it's a really a great setup. So what boats are being built there and you know, why is this so important? Well, we needed, well, obviously we couldn't keep up with demand, so we needed the extra space. And with this facility now, we have a space that we can build, uh, that we can keep up with demand. And we also, we build, what we build there now are all the, uh, all the closed molded pathfinders, which are the 23, the 25, and both 26s. And then we also build the bigger Cobias, 27 and up, all come out of this new facility. Well, guys, congratulations on the new facility. I want to thank you for all the years thank of support. thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And thank Charlie, you. you guys do such a great job. And again, it's e I got the easy job. I get to test all the stuff and fish out all the great stuff. And so, you know what? I'm the lucky one. Well, it's thanks to you and all our customers out there that we can do this kind of thing with this new facility. So we really appreciate it. Yes, we do. Absolutely. All right, Bree, but we need to go to a new region. So where are we headed? Yes, we do. And I have Gavin here who's going to help me introduce the next captain. Are you ready? Cool. Okay, let's go. If you're looking to be the king or queen of kings in the Yeti Panhandle region, you need to talk to Captain Pat Deneen. He's going to help us get on him. Go for it, Pat. Bye-bye. Hey, Bree, we should be covered up right now with kingfish, especially along the southwest and the south edge. This summer has been a bit strange with either plenty of mackerel around or very few. I mean, right now, there's some mackerel being caught near shore from the piers, also around the sea buoys and over shallow natural bottom. And the bigger ones are being caught over natural and artificial bottom in 100 plus feet of water. In fact, this past weekend, the Ronald McDonald Big Mac Classic out of Destin, they weighed several fish over 30 pounds with the winning fish being over 50. So there definitely are some bigger fish around. And soon, over the next few weeks, there's going to be some big kingfish caught inside Pensacola Bay using live menhaden. Those, those big kings come up into the bay, which is a pretty cool deal. But wherever you fish for them, live bait is the key for kings. Gulf side, the baits of choice are herring and cigar minnows. But if you want to target those bigger kings, go with blue runners, mullets, or bluefish. And there's a photo of Todd Jones of Panama City Inshore Guides. He's got a nice little sailfish he caught this past week while kingfishing just right outside the inlet of Panama City. So there are a lot of uh, pelagic species near shore right now. And speaking of that, the dolphin fishing remains uncharacteristically good off the panhandle, both near shore and further out where they're supposed to be. All summer we've wanted some good water to move in close to shore and we have it now. There's a pocket of good water uh, within a dozen miles off the beach of South Walton with a lot of floating, floating sargasm in it. Further south uh, from the Ozark, south past the Squiggles is really good water. In places that water's pushed up against some green water to the east. And that, that where it's pushed up, the grass lines are forming, the rip lines are forming, there's plenty of dolphin being caught. So trolls and ballyhoos are smaller plugs and have several spinning rods ready. Uh, either rigged with jigs or, or ready with a live bait or a, or a cut bait because when you run across the school you want to be able to uh, capitalize on that. 
also quite possible to run into some fish feeding on those mahis. And uh, just Sunday, um, the molly out of Destin, they released a 600 plus pound blue uh, just a little bit west of the Ozark at 380 feet of water. So uh, offshore is really kicking on right now. But moving inshore, late summer, October, November has been, there's great red fishing in the panhandle. They're in the passes and on the grass flats and also around the residential docks. In Panama City, the Hathaway Bridge has been really good around the birds. If the birds are flying and bombing, the reds are pushing the bait up to the surface and they can be caught using a topwater popper or swim bait. But if the birds are just floating on the surface, mark the fish with your sounder or drift around the floating birds and fish deep with a paddle tail plastic and use a heavy jig head, heavy enough to get down 25 or 30 or 40 feet. In Destin, the big reds around the bridge and jetties where you want to use a live bait on a Carolina rig, fish them up current of the bridge pilings or in that deep hole off the tip of the west jetty. These are pretty much all full redfish, some pushing over 30 pounds, so it's catch and release. But if you want to ki- catch some inshore fish and bring them to the table, mangrove snappers should be on your radar. We're catching them at the Destin Bridge and over in Pensacola. They're catching them at the jetties, the Pickens Pier. Any rock pile within the pass or near the pass, and also that pier at a three-mile bridge, what you want to do is cast in a full well of small filters, two to three inches long, and fish them on the bottom with a Carolina rig. Live bait is best, but a fresh dead, dead bait will work as well. Uh, it's better fishing with a little bit of current, so it's got to be either incoming or falling. The mangroves are well known for being very wary, so use light leaders as light as 10-pound test and a small little sneaky circle hook. The bay, bay mangroves are running up to about 14 inches. What else you got for me, Pat Tar? Rick, that's pretty much it, buddy. Well, I you're mean, not going to say goodbye and you love me and uh, all that dude, stuff? I, I tell you what, it has been an awesome year. In fact, it's almost hard to believe that the season's over. All right, bub, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region. Pat says inshore, Spanish and bull redfish under the birds around Hathaway Bridge. And then offshore, mahi action remains on fire. Look south of Panama City towards the Squiggles. All right, don't forget guys, the Harbor Trucks giveaway is going on until the end of the year. So go to their Facebook page, like it, mark going to an event and tag a friend. So head on over to harbortrucks.com for more information on how to enter and win big, win that truck. All right, we're FaceTiming with the one and only Tommy Derringer in the Strike Zone Northeast region. What's going on, Tommy? Hey guys, hey, you know what? I gotta thank you guys, Rick and Bree. You know, the producers, the crew, of course, all the captains. It's been a great year, a really fun season. You know what? Thanks to everyone down there for making me feel so welcome when I filled in for you, Rick. You run a tight ship down there, man. It's been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm already looking forward to next year. So that all being said, let's talk about the mackerel. You know, the mackerel here in the strike zone northeast region. You know, we love our mackerel, whether it's king or Spanish mackerel. Now, the king mackerel or kingfish, as we call them uh, more commonly, are more most popular fish to target here in the region during the warmer months. Now you can find them along the reefs and wrecks offshore this time of year and right along the beach pretty much all summer long. Now right now the kingfish are going to be out a little deeper in that 120 to 140 foot depth. Slow trolling live baits over structure and look for the structure that's holding the concentrations of bait. That's usually where you're going to find those kingfish. Now there's been a few big Spanish mackerel showing up along the beaches and inlets, but it typically needs to cool off a little bit before we see any big numbers of those fish. A uh, Clark spoon or a gotcha plug trolled along the beach or along the rips at the inlets is gonna be a great way to target the Spanish. But the kingfish is the king mackerel here. And I've got a picture. This is Kevin Baptiste, Jordan Johnson, and Greg Strump with a nice 30 pound king mackerel they caught during the ACGFA tournament earlier this summer. Now staying offshore, I spoke to Captain Jason Hadges from jhookfishingcharters.com. Tells me the sailfish have started to show up as he's caught at least a few sails on his last two trips offshore. And Captain Jason tells me the sailfish bite's only going to get better as we head into fall as those fish start to uh, migrate from the north. Jason likes to troll a naked ballyhoo and right now he's targeting structures near the ledge that are holding the bait. He says as it cools off, he's gonna start looking more for flying fish, as well as any kind of temperature break or current edge. Look for that sailfish bite to continue to be good heading into December. Now moving inshore, you know, we've got some really awesome redfish stuff happening throughout the region this week. The bull redfish are really stacking up at all the inlets, the St. John's River, and at the bigger bridges. 
The best bite has been about an hour or so on either side of high or low tide. The go-to baits are gonna be live or cut mullet, cut ladyfish or crab, pinned on a five to seven op VMC circle hook. Now, you know, I do see a lot of anglers, they're not using enough weight to get to the bottom when they're fishing for those bull reds. This week we have some huge tides, so make sure your bait is on the bottom, go big on that lead and make sure it's holding. Now, speaking of big tides, you know, we have a flood tide happening this weekend. A small soft plastic like a saltwater assassin, little boss rigged on a weedless hook makes for a great presentation up in the grass. Now, I really like that saltwater assassin because it has a little hook slot on the top of the bait for the hook to lay in. You know, it's important for it to be as weedless as possible when you're fishing in that thick grass so you don't get fouled up. Now, just about any of the grass flats from St. Augustine to Fernandina should be a good bet this weekend for the flood tide redfish. If you're in the southern end of the region where the grass really doesn't flood, you can also work the edges of the shorelines with a spinner bait or a popping cork on this big high tide. Those rigs make a lot of noise and sometimes they're gonna call those redfish out of the grass or structure or whatever it might be. Now we've been catching a lot of slot redfish using a popping cork on this high tide in and around Pelliser Creek and Palm Coast. And I've got a picture here. This is Sonia Riggs with a nice upper slot redfish she caught with me a couple of days ago while fishing the grass edges on the high tide with a popping cork. Now, also in shore, you know, the flounder has been pretty consistent the last few weeks, especially up in Jacksonville near Mayport. Target those industrial docks, any kind of structure or riprap with either a mud minnow or a finger mullet on a fish finder rig. Now you can also do well throughout the region by targeting any kind of small creek mouth or run out on the last of that point tide. As the water starts to cool off, a bit, look for some of those bigger flounders to start showing up. Now, October is typically my favorite month to catch a big doormat flounder. And I've got one last picture here to end the season on. Mallory Hendricks sent me this picture of a couple of nice flounders she caught near Mayport in the St. John's River. All right, Tommy, you definitely win the award for the greatest pitchers day in and day out. Yep. I appreciate you filling in for me. I love the Ricky Red Rods in the background. Look forward to next year's uh, remote studio from the Northeast region. Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Northeast region. Bye, Tommy. Bye -bye. Offshore, he said, a mixed bag of snapper and trigger fish in 120 to 140 foot depth throughout the region. And then inshore, bull reds in all the area inlets, bridges and nearshore wrecks, fish the bottom with cut mullet, ladyfish or crabs around the slack, high or low tide. As you can tell, we work very hard around here, and if you guys weren't aware, we never stop working, even during the off-season. And now we have something exciting for our fans, right, Rick? You're absolutely right, Bree. Now, whether you're a fan on social media or, obviously, one of our viewers, we want you guys to know that we have put together a special YouTube team. Check it out and what you're going to see with Sportsman's Adventures Real Life. Let's take a look. The next generation is here. This is what it's all about. This is Sports and Adventures Real Life. Well, that was pretty cool, Rick. I know everyone's been having a blast filming this series, and it will be uploaded shortly to Sportsman Adventures' YouTube channel, so make sure you guys check that out. All right, next on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, we're heading to the Northwest region, but not before we see what Dave has for us for new products at the CCA Workbench. Yes, Dave, it's your turn. We're going to figure out what this thing is. That's what we're going to do for new product. We're going to figure out what this is. It's floating I'm gonna, cornhole. I'm going to have guesses. Floating cornhole. Floating cornhole. Yes, I got That's, it. That sounds like a bad joke. Okay. A bad <laughs> joke <in there. laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> the Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Soft Science, Supreme Comfort Footwear. Real Legends, exclusively at Bells. And Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, and Pathfinder. Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 offshore four strokes. For those that like their V6 lighter, faster, and stronger. Setting new standards for power, efficiency, speed, and lightweight. 
built for the rigors of offshore boating, packed with Yamaha's legendary reliability. And now Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 four strokes offer a choice between digital or mechanical controls to match your rigging preference. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Is this spreadsheet weather? No, it's not. This is fishing weather. So stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass. Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. This is Academy Sports and Outdoors. We offer a huge sports and outdoors selection of top name brand gear like you've never seen. All at low prices like you've never seen. Because we're a sports and outdoor store like you've never seen. Visit us in store or at academy.com for the guaranteed lowest prices. Academy Sports and Outdoors for all for less. CCA Workbench is certainly where we talk about new yes, products sir. in Bree's version of floating cornhole. Correct. This is the backwater nets, and it and it's made for guys who are out <clears throat> waiting and they want if they're in a tournament or they want to keep some bait. What they can do is they can put their bait in here, and if they're fishing in a tournament, they can spread out from the boat. Two, a couple guys can wade and cover a lot more ground, but they can also cull their fish. They can put put them in here, and if they need to catch a bigger one and catch a bigger one, they put it in there. And, Throw the other one away, and that way they, they keep you know within the regulations and, of the tournament. And the cool part trout, about redfish or whatever. Exactly, and the cool part about the clear top. Right, that's the is, peeper. Yeah, and that way you can just check to make sure your fish is floating upright. He's in there Correct. swimming, you know. And yep. obviously, we all don't these have hinges to have are any made for PVC, so they won't corrode. Stainless steel hardware, PVC all around. This stuff is triple stitched and water resistant. So, <clears throat> awesome. you know, backwater nets. These things are pretty cool if you want to wade fish at all. Get these out of the way real quick. Got it. Next, we got some uh, sunglasses from Costa Del Mar over there. We got the Ring Con, which I believe is this one over here. That's named for the famous uh, California Point Blank, uh, Point Break, and it's a, uh, you know, it's a West Coast. Got a straight bridge and everything. Big frame with sharp angles. It's for, uh, you know, big-headed people. Hurry up, get to the next one. You, you know who you are, the big people. Anyway, slack tide is laid back. That's you know West Coast style again. Uh, it's got the hydrolite padding everywhere and the pin hinges, uh, 580 polarized. Yeah, that, that very nice, very, very nice. That's we called the slack. We with children now, That's Dave. Called the this slack is tide. real stuff That's right called here. the slack tide. So the ring con and the slack tide from Costa. What really, else you got, Bob? Really cool. Well, well, we're gonna do these R&R &R clips real quick. We've got uh, these, you know, Ray Rocher spent uh, two years uh, and seven different versions trying to make a better release clip. And we've been using release clips for a long time, but these are really well made. They've got a good synthetic material, it's super strong. It's pivots on that little ball in there. Always make sure that your clip's facing the right way. It's got a giant uh, stainless steel polished arm on there, which is a large diameter. Uh, again, softer on your, on your line that's going through there. Uh, those are the outrigger clips, obviously. He also makes some really cool kite clips. Uh, the M2 set over there. And they tighten down to... 25 pounds. Oh. We'll hold 25 pounds. So you can pull giant tuna baits, you know, in Australia like I like <coughs> to do. R&R &R so, tackle. Yes, sir. Tell Ray Rick sent you. If you're not sure, Rick and Ray. R &R. That's right. R&R. &R. <laughs> All right, we got some real legends here. We got three outfits for the fellas. This is the Shadester woven shirt here and the, and the sandbar shorts. Uh, really nice. These are all moisture wicking as well. Uh, quick dry, stretchable, uh, really good, you know, really good stretch to these things. Uh, very nice, very nice for the boys. Also, we have some more. This is the Leah, Leah Szymanski, uh, Real Legends, you know, support their local art, artists. Right. And that's the mackerel short that goes with it. 
and it's right oh, so here it back. is here's yeah. the mackerel shorts and they also come with a really nice sun shield to keep its cool sun shield as well mm -hmm. all these are from real legends uh, again we got some boys clothes still these are very nice long sleeve real tech real legends bone fish shorts moisture wicking quick dry again stretchies and we got two outfits from the ladies really quick two different tops on there two actually tops. two tops so short nice sleeve free line tee well Dave. no no I, I, I had to do that or i would they would anyway you messed it all i don't know which one's which now they got the bottom <laughs> is the adventure short and the uh long sleeve is the salt water woven look at the shorts very nice you would look really good in those yeah days. i would but i look better in the leggings you know you these, got leggings, <laughs> these are the, yes sir oh, yes. <laughs> Dave, the elite the comfort leggings. leggings they come with upf production moisture wicking and they're also quick dry and the long sleeve top uh again Sun protection. Dave, making, you can't all wear the these because they got no zipper in the front. Well, I oh like, my gosh. I, I, I think I'd look good in them anyway. You guys are hopeless over there with those clothes. <laughs> are we? You are. You're just hopeless. You did a great uh. job. Just kidding. Before we get to our next captain, I want to tell everyone to come on out to Academy <laughs> Sports and Outdoors grand opening in Daytona Beach and meet Tommy Derringer, Dave Farrell. He might be wearing those leggings and myself October 27th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It should be a fun time. All right. Captain Jeff Hageman in the Flagler Construction Northwest region is going to help you get wired for those weekend mackerels and so much more. Tell us, Jeff. Mackerel can be found throughout the entire region. They can be found in shallow water, grass flats, and offshore reefs and wrecks. Most of the fishing piers, like the Sunshine Skyway, will hold large concentrations of bait, and then that in turn will hold mackerel. So lots of bait, lots of mackerel. They're fast, aggressive, have razor sharp teeth. So that being said, wire leaders or extra long shank hooks is another thing we like to use. We can get away with a little bit less of that wire leader and get better bites. Um, Spanish sardines, yellow sardines, threadfin herring are all great baits. Uh, you might want to spend a couple extra minutes filling up the live well, getting plenty of these, and chumming like crazy. What you want to do is anchor up above those reefs and wrecks, or hard bottom, and chum out. Lots of these cut up live and a chum bag out, and we'll bring these right up to the back of the boat. Uh, they're a lot of fun with a fly rod. You can fly rod out, clousers, deceivers, anything that sardine imitation works really good. As far as artificial bait form um, in our area, jigs, spoons, the guys from the bridge like to throw a gotcha plug because they can really throw that thing far and cover a lot of water with it. Um, our average fish is roughly one to six pound in my region. And moving on to offshore, the red grouper and gag grouper bite has been good. The grouper bite in my region all summer has been pretty constant. Um, the red grouper bite's been over that flat Swiss cheese bottom in 60 to 120 feet of water. Cut squid and cut sardines have been the beta choice with a knocker rig with a six ounce to nine ounce hook. Six, ounce, six ounce to 10 ounces of lead, depending on the tide and depth. Um, the gags have been a bit a little bit deeper and they've been in that 90 to 200 foot of water over rock piles and ledges. Um, most of the fish in that area are gonna have to fight through the red snapper because there's been a bunch of them out there right now. So big hand sized pinfish, big grunts will keep those smaller red snappers off your baits and get you those gags and those bigger red snapper that are down there. Heavy gear is a must, 100 to 150 pound fluorocarbon leader with a 7 aught to 12 aught circle hook and 8 to 16 ounces of lead depending on the tide and depth again. And if you're doing that power drifting, uh, you might have to use just a little bit more. Uh, fish have been, there's been, there's been some 30 pound plus fish out there, but the average has been 4 to 8 pounds. Moving inshore, Captain Nick Wack Warrington, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this right, of high octane charters out of Crystal River reports a solid redfish bite right now around the outer mangrove spoil islands. His go to baits right now have been cut ladyfish and live penfish fished on a 4 aught BMC circle hook with two foot of 30 pound suffix fluorocarbon leader. So the majority of the fish have been slot sized, but there are some oversized ones mixed in. Continuing with the redfish report, Captain JB at JD Charters out of Apalachicola reports three redfish bites. Has been in the shallow water along the marsh and points. Main feed time has been early morning and late evening. The bite's been slow going during the midday. They're biting on three inch chartreuse squirrel tail swim baits and also feeding on live pinfish, live mullet, and shrimp. Also, continuing with the redfish, Captain Jimbo Keith, saltwater assassin fishing charters at Cedar Key, reports his bite has been really turned on around the outer islands. He said, Find the mullet, you'll find the redfish. He's fishing cut mullet on the bottom with a knocker rig with a four-aught circle hook. 
I got a couple of photos here of Captain JB and Captain Jimbo sitting. Nice. Some nice redfish. They look great. All right, you'd finish, Hag? I got one more. I got snook. Okay, um, tell me. Mario Costello, uh, Tall Terrace Charters out of Plantation Inn, the Crystal River, reports a good snook bite right now around the rocky shoreline, Crystal River, from the Yankee Town. He's using live pinfish on a three eye circle hook, and he's working the edges and the drop offs in low light and overcast condition. The snook right now are ranging anywhere from 24 to 32 inches, and I've got a photo here of Captain Mario with a red, with a snooky caught red fish in a redfish tournament with Captain James Kirk. All right, thank you so much, Hag. We'll talk to you later. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Northwest region. He says, inshore, snook along the beaches, passes, rivers, creek mouths. Use sardines and pinfish for bait, either free line or corked. And then offshore mangrove snapper on the artificial reefs, wrecks, and any other high relief structure in 25 feet of water or more. Use small cut fresh sardines, uh, baits for on 1-0s, the 3-0 -oh circle hooks with the lightest lead possible. All right, Rick, the CCA Florida Star <coughs> Awards ceremony and banquet is on Saturday, October 20th at Rock Crusher Canyon Pavilion in Amphitheater in Crystal River. Star winners will be awarded prizes. You can meet some of your favorite captains from Florida Insider Fishing Report and other fishing celebrities. Enjoy a great meal, a live performance, silent and live auction, a kid's fun zone, and much more. So get your tickets at CCAFloridaStar.com. But you got to stay with us, Floridians. We're headed to the southwest and east regions. And remember, if you want to keep up with everything fishing in Florida, visit our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, watch us on YouTube, and view and tag us on Instagram. We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Rapala. Catch the latest at rapala.com. Startron cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Yeti, built for the wild. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 30 years. Strike Zone Fishing, your fish hunt paddle store. And Guy Harvey, marine wildlife artist and conservationist. Real Legends Performance Clothing. Everything you need to be comfortable on the water all day long keeps you cool, dry, and protected from the sun. Durable performance technology at an unbeatable value. Shop anytime or go to reallegends.com to find a Bell store near you. Introducing the 2018 Nissan Titan Half Ton. The Titan you've known and loved since 2004 has been redesigned. Titan comes with a 5.6 liter gas V8 engine putting out 390 horsepower. Or opt for the Cummings Turbo Diesel with a five year, 100,000 mile warranty and up to $9,600 in total savings. The Titan has never been so affordable. So for special hassle free Florida Insider Fishing Report pricing, call one of our truck specialists now at 833 Got Trucks or visit harbortrucks.com forward slash Rick. Flagler Construction Equipment is your certified Volvo equipment dealer, servicing 55 counties in Florida. With Volvo, you get brute strength combined with bulletproof durability. That means low downtime and optimal production. Flagler Construction Equipment is the partner for all your Volvo sales, service, and rental needs, and your first and last stop for legendary customer service and support. Push boundaries with Volvo. Get to know Flagler Construction Equipment by stopping by one of our six locations, or visit us on the web at www.flaglerce.com. So I'm here with Lee from Harbor Trucks, and Lee, you know, this Titan really seems like it's got a lot of power. Why don't we tell everybody about the towing capacity of our Titan with the V8 as well as with the diesel? Great. Rick, you know, the, uh, the 5.6 liter V8 that we're in now, this is our gas engine, right? And this has 390 horsepower and 394 foot-pounds of torque, also married with a seven-speed transmission. Love it. So the diesel that I have, 
Tell me a little bit about that Cummings. That Cummings is just the powerhouse. I mean, we're 310 horsepower and 555 foot-pounds of torque. And the beautiful part is, with some minor modifications, we can punch it up quite a bit more. How much more can we punch it up? I think that's really important to talk about. Well, you know, if, if you do a full-on delete, and my accessory guy, Robert Centers, who you, you've probably already talked to, I mean, we're talking, you know, 500 horsepower, 900 foot-pounds worth of torque. Wow. And that comes with a pretty heavy-duty transmission, too. Now, I notice in tow haul, as I start to slow down and just lightly apply the brakes, seems like we've got a lot of brake. Why don't you tell me about the brake? Well, the beautiful part in, in this particular series, in the Platinum series, which we're in, of course, you've got the integrated trailer brakes, and because we're in tow haul, the communicators and the trailer brakes, everybody's talking to each other, the trailer, the truck, and it's all going to make it nice and seamless for you, less wear and tear on your braking system. So what about the size of the, the disc? You know, that is a great question. When Nissan first came out with this, they made some mistakes. And the mistake was they had made a small rotor and put it on a, a heavy duty truck with a great engine. And what they learned uh, after some problems is now they got a huge rotor and huge brakes. Well, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever for Lee or any of the other guys, you can simply go to harbortrucks.com or you might want to hit them up on Facebook at their Facebook page, Harbor Trucks. You know, Bree, just like Lee said, the one thing that I really love about Harbor Trucks is they listen and they're mm -hmm. making changes and the truck is evolving as we speak. You know, that's what's so awesome. Yeah, Customer to understand service. what we need. Exactly. And you know? remember, Harbor Trucks has a special pricing line just for our viewers, which is 833-GOT-TRUCKS. So make sure to call them up. All right, ah. Captain Ronnie Houston in the Bell Southwest region is with us ready to give his season finale report. So, Ronnie, let's hear it. Well, as we get ready to close in the Bell Southwest region, you know, the Spanish mackerel, probably one of the best things about the Spanish mackerel, it's a species that can be caught in a variety of ways and locations, both on the offshore and inshore side. Now, on the offshore side, the wrecks, the artificial reefs, the large bait pods, and when they travel in open gulf during migration. But on the inshore side, you know, you get your beaches, your piers, jetties, your grass flats, your passes, and believe it or not, the list goes on. They can be caught all year round, but fall and winter, they are abundant due to the cooler water temps. Now, in these areas, you want to look for uh, birds, bait pods, and skipping fish are a really good sign. Always when targeting them, you always want to also use a trace of wire to avoid cutoff. And if you use light line to leader, smaller knots are suggested to avoid cutoff. And baits of choice can be just about anything because they're scavengers. But I strongly suggest the easiest things are silver spoons, bucktails, got your lures, Live shrimp and pelters are the best, but like I say, when you get into them, they'll eat just about anything. Now, still on the offshore side, we're going to get with the mangrove snappers and the yellowtails. Gorgeous past the Sanibel, 45 to 65 feet of water, fishing wrecks and ledges, especially with the passing of this full moon. Now, heavy chumming to get the fish going, and then a variety of small bait, cut baits like squid, herring, pelters, and shrimp. Once the bite slows down, you want to reach them, but I strongly suggest once you get them going, you can flatline, use troll rides. Lightweight, depending upon where they are in the water column, and with the water being clear, I strongly suggest 20-pound fluorocarbons. Right now, that bite's going on really good. Now, on the inshore side, you want to concentrate according to Captain Danny Latham to the north for the redfish. The Matt Lache area, the East Wall, Burns Stored Alligator Creek, along sandbars and mangrove shorelines, on the higher stages of the tidal, on the mangrove shorelines and independent islands. Now, he also tells me on the lower stages, the potholes and troughs and sandbar edges. But now, right now, you want to be looking for schools that are grouping up. He's telling me the baits of choice right now that are the best are live pilchers chummed up, but also live pinfish, cut mullet and ladyfish, and gold spoons. If you find the schools and, and there's a variety of paddle toads you can use, like the bass and foreign to lead shiner, he's telling me the fish are averaging 22 to 32 inches. Bites should start to get better, especially with the groups of schools that are now moving in. And I got a couple of pictures with Captain Danny's customers up to the north. Those are some good fish you can be catching right now and probably into the next month. Also on the inshore side, the snook, he's also telling me. Pine Island Sound and Turtle Bay, but down to the south, Coon Key to Indian Key. All these areas on the higher stages of the tides around the Mango shorelines and independent islands, passes and outer Gulf Islands. Tides I'm suggesting are the last half of the incoming to the first half of the outgoing, but on the lower stages, points, passes and troughs using live pilchers, pinfish, topwater walk the dog lures, Gold and silver spoons. Right now, fish up to 40 inches are being caught, caught, but the most important thing you're gonna have to have is the moving water. And I got a couple good pictures. 
of a customer up to the north with Captain Danny Latham and my brother down to the south with a nice 40-inch snook. And as closing, I would like to say it's been a wonderful year. I'd like to thank all the sponsors, the people who watch this show, all the captains who's helped me out. And as you know, Rick, this year I tried something new. I went to some electronics. And one of the best things that's impressed me the most out of doing this show all these years is the Sirius Weather app. We've made a true believer me in a short time. If you get a chance, check out the Sirius Weather app. Thank you so much, Ronnie. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Calusa Cast Nets hotspots. Ronnie says that offshore permit Lossman's River to Gordon's Pass fishing wrecks and towers, 8 to 25 miles out using live crabs. And then inshore, Trout Pavilion Key to Wood Key fishing grass flats on the lower stage using noise making corks with three to four inch soft plastics or maybe even a live shrimp. All right, Rick, the East region has the big kings, but let's get some Spanish Max on the table. What do you think, Captain Mike? You know, Bree, both king and Spanish mackerel are chewing in my region. And while the king mackerel are the ones that are the big, big fighters, it's the Spanish mackerel that are really the best ones to eat. So we'll cover both. The king mackerel bite's been going strong for over a month from Palm Beach all the way to Fort Pierce. The fish are holding on that reef line in 70 to 100 feet of water. So places like the Loran Tower Ledge, the Six Mile Reef, the Sand Pile, and the Offshore Bar are all covered with fish right now. You can slow troll or drift with live bait or dead bait. Uh, rig them on a number four wire stinger rig or a monofilament triple hook Palm Beach rig. And while the kings are offshore, well, the Spanish macrobite is in on the beach, mostly around those red minnow schools that are off of Fort Pierce or off the St. Lucie Power Plant. There's some down towards Jensen Beach, down towards Hope Sound as well. Uh, they're also around the finger mullet schools that are near the inlets right now. Spoons and jigs retreat fast. We'll get that bite. Uh, there's some fish already showing up around Pex Lake where they typically school during the winter months. And the average king right now in my region is eight to 15 pounds, but there are fish up to 30 pounds. Average Spanish mackerel is more like one to three pounds with fish to seven pounds. I got a photo there. <laughs> Uh, uh, that's Allison Statner with a big kingfish. She caught this week. She caught it on the Blue Heron Drift boat out of Jupiter. And that fish ate a drifted ballyhoo. The other thing going, the dolphin bite in the last week has been outstanding with kind of one little hitch to it. It's been out really deep. There's been a handful of fish in 100 to 300 foot. But once you get out to 400 feet of water or more, the numbers have been really about as good as I've seen all year. The majority of dolphins uh, that have been caught are being caught around structure either weed lines or floating objects. So you can either troll the obvious, well-established weed lines, or you can run and gun, look for things floating and throw to that. Most of the fish are schoolies under 10 pounds, but there are some fish up to 30 pounds or more out there. Uh, some of the best action right now, 1,500 feet of water or more. So don't be afraid to start your day by just running out deep just to get away from the crowd. Uh, and then, you know, there's plenty of mullet on the inside. So you can throw your cast net, load your live well, and either slow troll them once you get out there, or you can uh, just run up to objects and pitch mullet. Or, you know, you can always go to traditional rig ballyhoo or live thread fins or sardines and just slow troll them or troll them around behind the boat. Average stuff right now is like 6 to 12 pounds. All right, let's go inshore, Hollywood. Well, this, this has been one of the best Septembers for snook fishing that I've personally ever seen. Uh, there's a lot of fish still holding around the inlets and on the beaches as well as along the seawalls and bridges that are within like a mile of those inlets right now. So the fish are pushing off the inlet, kind of moving inshore. We're just starting to see those, you know, first big push of mullet, and that's what the fish are focused on. So uh, you want to throw topwater plugs, uh, swimming plugs, saltwater assassin dye dappers, uh, anything that looks like a mullet. And, you know, of course, a live mullet thrown up against the seawall is going to work wonders. Coming off the full moon that we had on Monday, we should see a really huge improvement as well in the nighttime uh, snook fishing around the bridges at Jupiter, Stewart, and in Fort Pierce. On the back of this moon, we'll get those big high water incoming tides. Those push a lot of mullet down the shoreline, so the docks and bridges will be on fire, particularly in the intercoastal waterway off of town, and also the docks around Fort Pierce and Jupiter Inlet. Average snook's going to be like 24 to 34 inches. There are some big fish out there. I got a photo. Uh, Bob Gomlicker, he's the guy in the white t-shirt. He caught that oversized snook. He caught it on a small bridge in the Indian River, and that fish ate a live mullet. Now, there's also uh, still some glass minnow schools that are out on the beaches, and that's holding the focus of the tarpon in the area, although the swells that we're getting are kind of splitting up that bait and forcing the fish to move more towards the mullets that are migrating through. 
when they fish, uh, when they lock onto that mullet, that's when they'll move in the inlets and follow the fish inside. Places like the Crossroads, the St. Lucie Power Plant, the Moorings Channel, and Fort Pierce Inlet, they're going to get their full fall tarpon population any day. Now, probably um, in the next couple of days, there's still some resident fish that are up in the Loxahatchee and in the Indian River near the power plant. Uh, but the vast majority of tarpon that are around are out on the beach. And, you know, as those mullets start pushing, look for those tarpon to stage near the inlets at dawn and dusk. Because you typically get, you know, some big schools of mullet moving in the inlets right at dark. The tarpon will feed from those schools all the way into the inlet they'll follow or all the way into the river they'll follow those fish all the way inside uh you'll also see more fish around the bridges at night live mullet top water plugs are the way to go here tarpon range inside from 10 to 150 pounds i can't tell you what tackle to bring those fish are just all different sizes right now all right speaking of different sizes bass come in a variety of them why don't you tell me about the bass report bub well you know i've been talking to a bunch of people around the state and the dawn bite on Toho has just been rocking all week. Just big numbers, lots of fish, good concentrations of mostly school fish. The fish are on the outside edges of the deeper grassy areas, right at first light. And the heat is still kind of a problem. Air and water temperatures are, are really shutting down that top water bite early. So you want to be on the water in the dark. The bite's over by 9 o'clock. But until then, you can work the edges of the grass with die dappers, swim bait, or frogs in either white or pearl color, anything that kind of looks like a shad. And the blobs are just amazing. Most of the fish are school fish, one to three pounds. Then when that bite shuts down, you can move out to the deep water hydrilla patches in the middle of Lake Toho and either fish live shiners, rig with a small weight, or just slow troll them along the edges of the grass. Um, if it's a big fish on, on lures you're looking for, you can flip the holes in the hydrilla. The hot bait right now on Toho, the bass assassin skunk ape, in either Houdini or Junebug colors, depending on the water clarity. Uh, you go with one color over the other. And uh, the average bass right now in tow is one to three pounds. The guys that are flipping those uh, creature baits are catching fish up to six pounds. Thank you so much, Hollywood. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Atlas Jack Plate hotspots from the East Region. He says, inshore, spotted sea trout in the Indian River on the double bars of Middle Cove, and then saltwater assassin, Papa Smurf, color five inch shad, I wonder who that's named after, and then offshore, juvenile black fin tunas, and 200 to 300 feet of water off of Palm Beach, early morning and late afternoon bite brie. Papa Smurf is you. That's me. That's you. What are you gonna be for Halloween this year? I don't know. It's a secret. I it's do a secret, a but secret. you were a Smurf. I you was were. a smirk. It was good. Another event and coming up. And you're Pitbull. And you're Mr. Clean. And that Mr. was the Clean. best one, Mr. Huh? Clean. Another event coming up is Flo Loco's first annual Florida Sports Fest, September 29th at 10 a.m., where Captain Rick will be giving fishing seminars all day long at the Orlando Festival Park. It should be a fun day with musical artists and good times, so make sure to join him. Papa Smurf. Doing lots of seminars. Come and see me, guys. It's not one and done. We're going to be there all day, 10 to 6. All day long. All right, stay tuned if you're throwing a line in the Central East region. We're bringing you your captain right on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Woo! We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Harbor Trucks. Visit harbortrucks.com. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Suffix. Always use the best line. The IGFA. Fish for the future. Flagler Construction Equipment. Your exclusive Volvo dealer. And Okuma. Inspired fishing. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. Outside is a bully. There are bears screaming in fleet footed waters. Arrogant mountains. Goliaths. 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 And a hundred other excuses to stay inside. But there are ways to deal with bullies. Remember the glory days of gasoline? 
It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. Introducing the 2018 Nissan Titan Halfton. The Titan you've known and loved since 2004 has been redesigned. Titan comes with a 5.6 liter gas V8 engine putting out 390 horsepower. Or opt for the Cummings Turbo Diesel with a 5 year 100,000 mile warranty and up to $9,600 in total savings. The Titan has never been so affordable. So for special hassle free Florida Insider Fishing Report pricing, call one of our truck specialists now at 833 Got Trucks or visit harbortrucks.com forward slash Rick. Today's Power Pull Tip of the Week is about the four different models to choose from from Power Pull. Starting with the 8 and 10 foot blades that feature an aerodynamic design with a pocketed spike and our soft close system. It's available in four different eye-popping colors, including the candy blue, candy red, and of course the black and the white. Moving to our Pro 2 series, it's available in three different sizes, a four foot, six foot, and eight foot. It's also available in the black and the white. Moving to our Sportsman 2, it's available in only an eight foot, but it's got a matte black powder coated finish, and it starts at only 1295. Then moving to our Little micro anchor, it's perfect for your kayaks, john boats, and small skiffs. So whichever application you're looking for, PowerPole's got a model just for you. And that's your PowerPole tip of the week. You know, Bree, we can never decide if we're gonna say something, but you know what I'm gonna say is I can't wait to do power pole tips for next year. 13 new freshies, and they got a lot of cool stuff coming. I want to reserve one of those because I just want to say that's your power pole tip. Can yes. I do it? Yes, okay, you cool. can. You gotta be in with me At when I go. One. Okay, I will. I don't know when it is. Okay, All next right. year though. All Captain right. Jim Ross has the Bell Central East Region kingfishing dialed in, so let's see what he has to say. Hi Jimbo. Hey, hey, gang, I tell you what, we, you know, the guys and gals here in the Central East region really know how to catch king mackerel. And honestly, they're probably our most sought-after species that we have here in the Bell Central East region. Kingfish make our charter boats money day in and day out. They put smiles on their customers' faces day in and day out. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you're on a charter boat or just going out there and doing it yourself. You're, they're going to be the fish that you're probably going to fall back on if you aren't targeting them first during the day. Now, most of the time you want to target them on the 65 to 90 foot reefs. That's where it seems to be the best bait, uh, best action if you're pulling live baits. And if you're pulling live baits, one to two knots for live or frozen baits with a wire stinger rig is perfect. You can also troll strip baits or spoons. Uh, you can put a, a strip bait behind a sea witch and pull it at two to four knots and get those fish to strike. You can pull naked or skirted ballyhoo at three to five knots and get king mackerel to bite. Or if you really want to, you can pull some of those big x trap magnums, king getters, or the Williamson Speed Pros at five to eight knots and catch king mackerel on most days. So, you know, it doesn't really matter what speed you want to go at, king mackerel are willing to play. Now, during the mullet run, the kingfish outside of Port Canaveral right now are, changing, are chasing mullet up and down the shipping channel. I was actually watching them skyrocket inside of the mouth of the port the other day, and I've seen several fish in the 40-pound class come out of the water here in the last couple of times I've been out there. So, guys, even if you're trolling in an aluminum john boat, you can get out there and catch them. Now, kingfish are probably the most versatile, versatile and wide-ranging game fish we have in the region, as you know. But I tell you what, it's, it's the second best thing coming up right now to kingfish is our sharks, and that's our second species of the night. And most of the sharks right now are near shore, so you can anybody can get out there and catch them. We've got black tips, spinners, uh, sharp nose, black nose, all kinds of different ones. Once again, live mullet or live pogies, put one out behind the boat, put it on a little bit of wire, and hang on. Most of our sharks are running about 40 to 80 pounds right now, and a few of those black tips are scaling to over 100 pounds. Now, I've got a picture here of Laren Malone, who was out with myself and my son Justin on a charter trip the other day, and he got a nice black tip. Uh, that fish ate a live mullet on a uh, number 7 DMC circle hook. Now, swinging inshore, kind of. We're still kind of talking about the inlets and the jetties because snook action has been on fire at the inlets, this, with, especially with this recent full moon. Flare hawk jigs at night, Rapala X-Rap 14s, 
Storm swim baits, all of these are working really good for the snook right now. And the anglers are catching plenty of them in the daytime as well. The inlet jetties, uh, you know, if you're fishing from the jetty, you can use live bullet, pogies, croakers, pigfish. You can just simply put them on a knocker rig. If you're drifting them in a boat, then put just enough weight to keep them from snagging in the bottom. Most of our snook are running 25 to 38 inches at this time, so there's a lot of legal size snook out there. And I've got two pictures here. The first one is of Jan Malone with a nice uh, slot size snook that she caught. And then the second one is another one that she caught on the very next cast, and I'm holding that one up for her. Really? Come on, two and two? Two for two? Yep, two for two. Two casts, two fish. So it wasn't too bad. All right, tell me about the redfish, Bob. The inlets are still the place to be. Sebastian is okay. Ponce has been on fire lately. The guys at Salty Dog Outfitters are giving another glaring report up there about how good or, you know, how excellent the red fishing has been up in their, in their area. Uh, but, you know, most of those fish are over slot. If you want the slot size fish, come back inside, fish the backwaters, uh, anywhere around Sebastian Inlet where you've got uh, mangrove shorelines, you've got d- depressions. Uh, docks, they're holding around those, and then up in the Ponce Inlet area as well, they're holding on the same type of structure, mangrove shorelines, depressions, and docks. Live finger mullet's the number one thing to use, and of course, you know, if uh, you want to catch a lot, a, a lot of slot size redfish, bring yourself a lot of bait, because there's a plenty of them, especially in that Ponce area. Now, one thing I wanted to say is that, you know, this is the final television show of the season, guys, but you know what? We're still here, 52 weeks a year. So if you guys want to listen to our audio reports, make sure that you go to the website in the off-season and listen to the audio reports for whatever region you want to go fish in. All right, thank you so much, Jim. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Sea Sucker hotspots for the Central East region. Offshore, slow troll live mullet rigged on a wire stinger rig over 70 to 90 foot reefs for king mackerel up to 30 pounds. Woo. And then in the shore, use live fingerling mullet croakers pinfish on a knocker rig at the area inlets and jetties for redfish, mangroves, snappers, and snoops. You know, Rick, since Jim mentioned it, why don't you tell everybody about the audio reports? So the audio reports are simple, guys. You can go to your region, go to our homepage. You'll see a map there. Click on the region you want to listen to. Every three days, the captains, or three times a week, the captains will give you a four to five minute report about what's happening. So basically, it's this show audio wise without us without us but you can still have your reports and your captain well maybe we should just have a brief report okay that sounds good okay. all right don't leave us just yet we're taking a short break and then telling you how to stay fishing with us until next season so stay tuned we'll be right back Introducing the 2018 Nissan Titan Half Ton. The Titan you've known and loved since 2004 has been redesigned. Titan comes with a 5.6 liter gas V8 engine putting out 390 horsepower. Or opt for the Cummings Turbo Diesel with a 5 year 100,000 mile warranty and up to $9,600 in total savings. The Titan has never been so affordable. So for special hassle free Florida Insider Fishing Report pricing, call one of our truck specialists now at 833 Got Trucks or visit harbortrucks.com forward slash Rick. Master your most challenging offshore experience with confidence and ease with Yamaha Helmaster. Precise, intuitive control on the open sea. Unrivaled ease for maneuvering and docking in port. And now Setpoint adds three new dimensions to boat control. Maintain boat position with fish point or a position and heading with stay point or a heading while you drift with drift point. Yamaha Helmaster. Now with Setpoint. Complete digital control for today's larger offshore boats. one of the most ancient forms of hide-and-seek known to man. And nobody knows how to play the fishing game better than the backcountry guides and offshore captains of the Florida Keys and Key West. Ready or not, here we come. to put fish in the boat, you don't mess around with the thing that puts fish in the boat. Always use the best line. 
Thanks for tuning in to the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram to keep up with our captains, contests, and appearances. You never have to miss a show. You can find full episodes, special segments, and updated fishing reports from your region right on our homepage. Just head to FloridaInsiderFishingReport.com for everything you need to know to stay hooked up. At this point, we would be telling you what we are fishing for next week, but it's our season finale, so we will see you all next year. Make sure you keep up with our audio reports. We want to thank the Florida Gulf Coast Fishing. Charles Drew Charles Middle. Charles Drew Middle School. I'm just getting really emotional right now. I don't want it to end, okay. but it's okay. Let's look at this young guy who's with us tonight. So, Bo, how big? Show me with your hands. How big is the biggest fish you ever caught? Show me. That wow! Yes, that's that's great. You Thank like you guys so much for tuning we'll take in. Some more home. Oh, we're still talking to Baby Shark. Baby, Baby Shark, do do. We're feeding him Swedish fish. We'll see all you guys yep. next year. We will. All up Thank you so much for tuning home. in. We really appreciate you guys being our fans and keeping us working and fishing. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Working and fishing. Rick, we'll see you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And you know what? Don't forget Bye -bye. Sportsman's Adventure 2019. YouTube channel.